Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will be implementing a design pattern called the repository pattern in our Planets project. This diagram illustrates the current state of the project, where only the DTO or a data transfer object has been implemented. The separation only exists between the client side and the controller logic, while the controller's logic and data storage remain tightly coupled. To achieve a separation between the controller logic and the storage, we need to introduce the repository pattern. If we implement the repository pattern, we can realize the following benefits. First, separation of concerns. Second, abstraction, flexibility and modularity. Third, testability. And the last one will be consistency. In the context of testability, we will be implementing in memory repositories in the chapter dedicated to tests in this course. To implement this pattern and adhere to best practices, we must identify the correct place to integrate it into our project. The right place for implementation is where you can see the appeared arrow marker 5a and 6a on the slide. Additionally, I have updated the sequence string at the top of the slide to include the repository pattern. This is what our code should look like after separating the controller from the database using the repository pattern. Please note that it's quite difficult to explain the actual flow with a diagram. It's better to see the code and understand how the data flows and the actual position of the repository pattern within the code. To implement the repository pattern, we typically need three components. An interface that specifies crude methods for data access, a concrete repository class that implements the repository interface, and the last one, repository dependency injection to register and manage the concrete repository class. Let's follow this list and create the required items one by one. I would like to mention that similar to DTO, the repository pattern can be implemented either as a standalone project within a solution or as a set of classes within a project. Since our application is a project within the solution itself and doesn't require additional projects for implementation, the repository pattern, based on the current architectural requirements, will be implemented as a set of folders and classes within the project. In the Solution Explorer, the first step is to create a folder. I'll name it Storage Repositories. Inside this folder, we will create an interface named iSolar System Storage Repository. Within this interface, we need to include the required methods. These methods defined in the interface must be subsequently implemented by the repository class. The first method will be named getAllAsync because in our controller there is a method that retrieves all record from the database, named getAll. The getAllAsync method's signature specifies that the method will be asynchronous and return a list. Just a quick reminder. In the Solar Systems controller, I have implemented async await and try cage blocks for all action methods. In the previous lessons, we focused on implementing best practices for the update by ID and delete by ID methods. Since you are already familiar with the pattern and the implementation process is similar for other methods like get all and others, I didn't create a dedicated lessons for those. The updated code is available on GitHub, so you can incorporate it into your code based on the examples from the previous lessons and then compare it with the My Solution on GitHub. Now, after defining the interface and having the getAllAsync method, we can proceed to create a class that interacts with the database. I'll create a class and name it SQL Solar System Storage Repository. Since this repository class will communicate with the SQL database, we will implement the interface in this class. Within this class, we will create the constructor and the necessary logic to communicate with the database. This class will be responsible for providing the database response to the controller, thus separating controller and database concerns. Additionally, we need to implement constructor dependency injection. Then we add a field. Additionally, the getAllAsync method to meet the interface requirements will return a list of the solar system model and we should mark it as an async method. 
and we can copy the required logic for this method from the getAll method in the controller. Paste this logic into the repository class and return the results from here. So the first two steps, creating an interface with the getAll async method and a class that implements the interface's logic, are now completed. The third step, as discussed earlier, will involve implementing repository dependency injection. Rest assured, I will explain at the end of this lesson how the data flow works after runtime, from a client to the controller, then to the repository, and subsequently to the database, and so on. Now let's move on to the third step, dependency injection. In the program file, at this point, we will once again add the Web Application Builder instance. And to implement dependency injection, we will use add scoped. The service lifetime is the most appropriate choice for the iSolar system storage repository interface. The reason is that we want to ensure that all components created within the scope of the repository are reused throughout the entire HTTP request. Other options like add transient service would create a new instance of the repository with each new request, potentially leading to performance issues. On the other hand, the add singleton service is not suitable because it would create a single instance of the repository shared across all HTTP requests. This approach is more appropriate for stateless services, but not for stateful services like a repository. Thus, add scoped is the only suitable option for implementing dependency injection within our logic. The builder services add scoped method is used during initialization to register a service with a scoped lifetime in the application's dependency injection container. In this case, an implementation of iSolar System Storage Repository will be registered with the concrete type SQL Solar System Storage Repository class. The collection of services within the application's dependency injection container is provided by builder services, which is typically an instance of Web Application Builder. The services property grants access to the service collection. Now the same but explained in simple words. When a client makes a request to the application, the addScoped method is used to create and manage a specific type of service that's tied to that request. In our case, the service is iSolar System Storage Repository and its concrete implementation SQL Solar System Storage Repository class. These services are often used to handle things related to that particular request. Think of them as special helpers that are available while that request is being processed and then cleaned up afterward. So now we just need to inject this part into the constructor of the controller class to make it available there. Copy it and paste it into the constructor. Let's change the class name to become a parameter here so we can refer to it as a part of the injection. Next, as always, we create a private field to make it available within the controller. And don't forget the shortcut for that, which is control period. Now for the get all action method, we modify this variable to retrieve the data using the newly created repository class. This variable will obtain data from the injected SQL Solar System storage repository. Since the interface is implemented here, we can automatically access the get all async method. With these changes, the getAllAsync method will communicate with the database, serving as an intermediary between the controller and the database. The rest of the logic within the getAllAction method will not require any changes. The previous HiKaiTalkDB context injection will remain inside the controller since the other methods are still using it and connected directly to the database without the implemented repository pattern. We will change them later to avoid extending this lesson and making it too long. Alternatively, you can attempt to make all the required changes yourself, and then we can compare the results. The implementation of the other methods will follow in the next lessons. Now it's time to open Swagger. Currently, we can use the getAll method only with the implemented repository pattern. When we send a request, we will receive the corresponding response. The implementation is working correctly. However, it's essential to remember that all other methods remain unaltered and the repository pattern is not yet implemented in these methods. Now let me explain how the newly implemented separation of the database and the controller works. Let's begin with the entry point, which is the program file. When we start the application or during runtime, 
the dependency injection service within the application will be configured as follows. The addScoped method will configure a service with a scoped lifetime, creating a new instance of the service for each HTTP request. The interface iSolar System Storage Repository is registered with the dependency injection container. Since this interface contains the getAllAsync method, this method must be implemented, which it is. The SQL Solar System Storage Repository class is the concrete implementation of the class that fulfills the contract defined by the iSolar System Storage Repository interface. When a component of our application requests an instance of the iSolar System Storage Repository interface, the dependency injection container will provide an instance of the SQL Solar System Storage Repository class. This is the initial part that happens during runtime and the dependency is now on standby within the application, ready to be injected when an HTTP request is received, following the addscoped method's architectural implementation. Now let's see what happens when a request arrives at the controller. Upon receiving a GET request, NetCore will search for available controller classes registered with the current route, which in this case is API Solar Systems. Within this controller, the getAll method will be triggered, since it aligns with the route and the request type, which is get. Next, a variable named solar systems is created. This variable leads us to the SQL Solar System Storage Repository. This class implements the iSolar System Storage Repository interface, which means it must make the interface methods available. This is why we have the getAllAsync method here. When this class is accessed, we inject the Haikai TalkDB context instance into the class constructor. Then we create a variable called Solar Systems, which holds a reference to the DB context created by Entity Framework. Using the LS Solar Systems, which corresponds to the model and the Solar System table in the database, we can perform the required manipulations, such as retrieving all records in this current case. Finally, we return these records from the SQL Solar System Storage Repository class to the caller, which in this case is the controller. Therefore, the Solar Systems variable in the controller's get method serves as the point of interaction where the controller communicates with the repository class, and the repository class accesses the database, receives the response, and then passes this variable via the DTO to the end client. With the repository pattern implemented and best practices followed, the controller has no knowledge of the database, as concerns are appropriately separated. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!